What is all this? Hi. Finally, a mini PC with some options. This is the Chattray IT12. It's a tiny, tiny, tiny bit bigger than some of the mini PCs I've seen, but it's still lightweight. It features the Intel i9-13900H, which has 20 threads, and this has a lot of ports. That makes me happy. Also, there's expansion options under the hood. So after these messages, we're gonna talk about all the specs, we're gonna test this out, and I'm gonna tell you exactly what I think this is good for. Thanks to Hookies for sponsoring this video. Now these are OEM Windows keys. That means that you do your own tech support. You're not gonna be relying on Microsoft and they're generally locked to the hardware. We got a coupon code, click on buy now. Put in coupon code TS25, hit apply, and that price comes down. Now when you compare that to the outrageous prices from Microsoft, you'd have to buy this many, many, many times to equal the price of one regular key from Microsoft. As of right now, this Windows 10 Pro key will unlock Windows 11. We also have Windows 10 Home. Windows 11, you can buy it directly. Windows 11 Home. And we have two flavors of Office. Once you're finished, all you have to do is click on your user account up here. Go to your user center. Click on My Purchase Orders. Just View, Keys, and Codes. And you can just copy and paste your key. Hit Start. Type Activate. Click on Activation Settings. Paste it in there. Click on Next. And you will be activated. So head on over to hookies.com to get yourself an OEM Windows key at a price that makes sense. All right, I'm glad you got your windows activated, but let's get serious about what's going on right here. Let's take a look at some of these specs. So here's the CPU, you got your 13900H, and it's got performance cores and E cores. So you got six performance cores right here, 12 threads on that, because those are all hyper-threaded. Then we have eight E cores, which are not hyper-threaded. They're a little lower power, but they do a lot of the background stuff, which makes 20 threads in total. These performance cores are quite a bit more powerful than the E cores, so when you do your tests, your single core performance is gonna be great your multi-core is going to be good. So we got 32 gigabytes of DDR5 at 4,800 megahertz. The size of this in millimeters, 160 by 130 by 52 and it weighs 680 grams. This one has one terabyte M.2 and you can get all these different options down here. So this is how we have it configured with US plugs. 32 gigabytes of RAM, you can go all the way up to 64 gigabytes of RAM and four terabytes, which might be interesting if you're running a server or something. On top of that, we have Wi-Fi 6, we got Bluetooth 5.0, we have four outputs. You can use four displays, all 4K on this. The graphics are the Intel Iris XE graphics. I'll, I'll say it right now. If you're just looking for gaming, it'll play a lot of games, a lot of older games and stuff. But the AMD uh, systems, especially the ones with the 780M, they're pretty much 20 to 50% faster depending on the game. Some it's pretty close, but most games it's uh, an easy win for the AMDs when it comes to gaming. Now when it comes to office and desktop use, well, these Intels sometimes are a little bit faster. So that's what I'll say about the graphics. Let's look at the ports. Starting on the front there, you got your power button and then you got your USB 4, which is Thunderbolt 4 as well. If you wanted to hook up an external graphics card, that'd be a great place to do that. Then we have four USB 3.2. We have microphone and headphones on the front. So it's not the combo thing. You can use standard stuff, plugging it in there. Flipping it around to the back and we have all kinds of options. Look at that. You got two HDMI. Those are HDMI 2.0. You got a display point 1.4. Then we've got two USB 2.0, which I like to have for mouse and keyboard. We don't need 3.2 for that. Then we have two NICs, and these are 2.5 gigabit NICs. What kind did I hear you say? Let's check. All right, these NICs are the Intel i266V. So you got two Intel 2.5 gigabit NICs. I interrupt this video. So I meshes them because this device is very similar to a similarly spec mini PC that's really made to be a little Proxmox server or a home server. It's got a bunch of, you know, ports on the back and all that. But this one has a lot of the same internals, plus two 2.5 gigabit NICs on the back, and we've got plenty of expandability under the hood. So I said, you know what, if this were just even more competitive, it would be great for people who don't need all these options, who don't need all the extra ports on the inside, and who just wanna have a few hard drives, some 2.5 gigabit NICs, and wanna run a home server. And so they said, all right, we'll apply a $100 coupon, and they're gonna give you an additional 8% off. The coupon code for that is Chetre PC, all one word, just like that. Put that in when you're checking out over here on Amazon and you'll get an additional 8% off. And this works with both the 12900H and the 13900H. So, you know, if you wanna get something that's a little less expensive, that's still gonna be a great server, this with the $100 off and the 8% off is a good deal. I feel like the stuff that I'm doing right now could totally work on that PC. I wouldn't notice any difference because right now I don't have the third M.2 populated and I'm not using the PCI Express on the Minis forum that I'm running Proxmox on. So I wouldn't notice any difference whatsoever if I switched over to this PC. They're the same things under the hood. 
really. I mean, like the same speed or whatever. You're going to get basically the same speed. So I feel pretty good for messaging him and saying, hey, give us a deal because now we got one. Let's take off the hood and see what's going on down there. Now you take off the feet. It was actually a little bit of trouble to take the feet off. Not too much, but got them off. Then you unscrew, then pry off the back. And then there's a sled for a 2.5 inch drive. And I think somebody, Western Digital or Seagate or somebody just released like a six terabyte 2.5 inch spinning drive. If you want a huge drive in this, you can do that, but you can put your SSD right there. And it comes with a little adapter in the box allowing you to plug up a SATA port and a SATA power port to power that drive. If you take that off for moving four screws, now you've got access to the innards and there's an extra M.2 slot. So you've got two M.2 slots on the inside. One's populated with the one terabyte SSD that came with this, M.2 SSD that came with this. And then you also have access to your RAM there. If you wanted to upgrade to 64 or whatever, you will have to remove the RAM that's in there because it's got two sticks running in dual channel. But yeah, I like the expandability options. But right now we'll talk about what we can do with the included Windows 11 Pro. So let's run through some benchmarks here. Let's check out some CAN benchmarks starting with Unigen Valley. And you know, I did not expect 65.2 because the Intels are not usually as fast as this, but hey, superposition, 1080p medium. And hey, this is the fastest Intel that I've seen yet, I believe. 28.99 FPS. This taxes the CPU as well as the GPU. Final score 3875. Let's check out our Geekbench single and multi core score. You can see 2034 for the single core and 12. 394 for the multi-core. Scroll down so you can see the individual tests here. Just pause if you want to see any specific test. All right, let's check out the OpenCL score, which is the GPU, 17404. And I'll scroll down again so you can see those individual tests. All right, how about some Cinebench? Cinebench R23, let's start off with a single core, and these i9s have a really good single core performance because they have those performance cores. And then when you switch it over to the multi-core score, we still have good performance, but you know, the smaller cores do bring it down just a little bit. So our two different scores for multi-core, we got 13447, and the single core score is 1412. Let's run Crystal Disk Mark to check the hard drive speed. And looking pretty good there on the read, 4675, and the write is 1813. Seen better, but you know, not too bad. The IOPS here, look at the 4K randoms, 157, 123, and then the right IOPS, 121, 087. Pretty good. That'll give you an idea of how that crucial M.2 is running. And we will finish up by messing around in Premiere. I always like to do that. So I've got, all right, let's give Premiere a try right here. I'm zipping around. Feels good. Oh, I'm running at half. Let's crank it up to full, shall we? There we go, full. This is just me prying things off, so it's not going to be that much movement. Prying off those feet. Yes. All right, let's do a little cross dissolve. Let's see how that runs. I don't expect it to be perfect, but see how we got. Lots of movement in that cross dissolve. Decent. So, yeah, you can edit 4K video on this just fine. I wouldn't run that. I'd run it at like half or fourth because this little window here, you don't need half. But even at fourth, it should be about the same because there's so much movement in the camera. Yeah, see all that movement there? I put that over here where there's no movement. I bet it would be different, but it is what it is. Ada 64 has been running for about 15 minutes, and here's the temperatures that we've got. 100% CPU, as you can see there. Let's go over here and bring up some sensors here with hardware info. You can see all the info there on the screen if you like. 85 is the high. It's okay. It's within spec, so that's pretty good. Now let's check out the noise. All right, there's what we got. 48 decibels. It would, you know, go up and down a little bit, depending on what's going on, but it's a constant noise. It's not too annoying, but you definitely can hear it. It's louder than some. It's not whisper quiet. And just so you know, this room is around 40 decibels um, when I'm just sitting here doing nothing so 48 not terrible but you know at least it's a constant noise you can definitely hear this let's take a look at cyberpunk now this is running on the medium setting with the motion blur turned off because who needs that nonsense and we got 25.44 fps let's try this again on the low setting and see what we can get all right, so we got 29.39. I would not use this for premium gaming. For reference, for reference, the AMD 780M that comes with the 8845HS and also the 7840HS, 7940HS, a whole bunch of different CPUs. That one on medium gets 47.2. So totally different game when it comes to gaming, I guess. So my final judgment is this. If you want gaming, go AMD. Just ignore the Intel stuff altogether. If you want to do really fast office of stuff, stuff that requires, you know, good single core performance, you want to do some editing, whatever, the Intel is going to be good. Is it going to be better than the AMD per dollar? I don't know. It depends on the price of the AMD. If you see a 7840HS for two or $300 cheaper, then no, the AMD is better per, per, per dollar. 
but the Intel generally is going to have a slight edge on a few different things. Love the expandability, love the ports. I actually like the aesthetic of this unit, even though it's all plastic, but on the outside, but that's just subjective. Um, and I like the fact that I, you know, I'm totally fine with these things being a tiny bit bigger to make room for all these upgrade options. So as you can see, it's really not that much bigger. It's like a tiny bit bigger than some of the other ones, but you have so many more options when it comes to ports and you know internal expandability. I love the, uh, the extra 2.5 inch slot that we get with this unit. I've only seen it a couple of times and I wanna see it more because that's the difference in being able to have like a little file server or running a bunch of VMs or just, I don't know, having another drive just to put a whole bunch of video games on. That's a, that's a big difference to me. So anyway, I like the options, but as it is, it's just a good machine that checks off a lot of my boxes. All right, let's see what's on sale over here. Well, you know, uh, these are on sale. I'm gonna swap it around. We'll put the standard issue back on sale for half price. How about that? Both of these are gonna be on sale for half price. And then this keyboard, uh, cause I got a few boxes and I wanna get rid of them before I flee the country. Still trying to do that, but yeah. So 1999 for the best. This is the best membrane keyboard. It feels good. It's very simple. You hold down the function and press tab to change through the colors. No software needed. It's poppy. I like it. And it's water resistant. See, that's us pouring water on it to show you how water resistant it is. It's amazing. All right, epicpants.com. Links are all in the description. And now what we're going to do is I'm just going to go through the UEFI, the BIOS on this so you can see, because sometimes people ask, hey, you didn't look at the UEFI, the BIOS, what's it look like? So right now I'm not going to talk. I'm just going to play some music. This is music I've made. If you like that, there's also a link in the description for this old chiptune style music. Anyway, let's go through the UEFI and just look around. So I'm not going to say anything. You can just check it out.